Welcome to NDSU Extension. That's North Dakota State University Extension. We provide our programs for everyone. Today's program is Background in Cattle, Fall 2021, a series for cattle producers looking at backgrounding their cattle. Today's talk will be Feeds, Alternative Feeds, and Cost of Gain by Carl Hoppe, Extension Livestock Specialist located at the Carrington Research Extension. Center, a part of NDSU. Our new crop calves in 2021 are on the ground and are being presently weaned and the weather has changed and we're looking forward to a new feeding season. Of course, that brings challenges. So that um, we have to consider what happened last year. And I always have to comment that our feed prices continue to follow the corn price. And it might even be higher because of the drought that we had in 2021. As you can see in this picture, our corn crop was pretty small, and people even turned cows out on their field just to have something to eat. And it's been a challenge for us uh, cattle producers in North Dakota, but uh, we move on. And I'd just like to go a little walk through history here. <clears throat> in 2017, our corn prices were actually less than $3 a bushel, and that drug the rest of our other feeds down as well. Alfalfa hay was $80 a ton, grass hay was at 65, wheat and heads were around 95. Uh, we had barley malt sprouts at that time at 115. Our corn price was around $3, $30 a ton, and canola mills at 186 a ton, and dry distillers was on par at 113 per ton, all based off the corn price. Well, that was in 2017, and near, um, four years ago so now uh let's or five years ago now let's look at what happened in 2018 prices remained almost the same 2019 corn price moved up a little bit maybe 30 40 cents and all the rest of the feeds increased accordingly in 2020 uh, feed prices remained somewhat the same so just when you think you've got a trend going here of years of lower feed costs for cattle 2021 shows up and our price of corn is 575 a bushel. That's because of national demand, not because of the local drought, just because of national demand. Now alfalfa hay has increased up to $175 a ton. In some places it might be $200, $250 a ton, depending upon the quality of the alfalfa. Um, grass hay is $120, $125 a ton. Uh, wheat middlings, $190. Soy hulls is a new product available in North Dakota because of the processing industries are making it more available and there's more of them in North in the North Dakota region and it's being priced at 165. Uh, corn silage uh, $55 a ton just because our corn price has gone up. The canola meal is surprisingly somewhat constant until previous years but dried distillers grains has increased correspondingly just like the way corn has. So this year our feed costs have increased. Drought makes it a difficult year. And we have been struggling for feed for cattle producers that uh, were out of feed. They probably sold cows. They weaned off calves early, fed them early. This particular program really focuses on the fall weaning cows, the ones that um, scraped by with enough feed, worked on their harvest. And now that the weather has changed somewhat in November, uh, weaning is now progressing on these April May born calves. One thing I got to note in North Dakota is that we have a lot of different crop processing plants across the state. We have corn distilleries for making ethanol, which creates the byproduct corn distillers grains, located throughout North Dakota as well as into South Dakota. North Dakota also has quite a few wheat mills, wheat middling, or wheat mills uh, for making wheat mids, and located in Grand Forks, Carrington, Minot, Fairmont. Um, I always have to point out that our the state mill and elevator in Grand Forks is the single largest mill in the world in one location. That just underscores how much uh, wheat millings are produced out of that plant and mostly shipped out of state. Uh, we have uh, uh, sugar uh, factories uh, processing across the state, uh, it, mostly in the Red River Valley, but some out in Sydney, Montana. Uh, these particular uh, plants produce uh, beet pulp, usually wet. They can also produce beet tailings, but a lot of that's being now moved up to Grand Forks to the ethanol refinery that's specifically made for uh, fermenting uh, the sugars out of beet tailings. And of course, we have a couple of potato processing plants, and we have 
um, a wet corn milling facility down at Wapaton. We just have a plethora of processing co-products available in North Dakota. A lot of those are being shipped out of state, but we do have some local demand and they create an opportunity for us for cattle feeders in North Dakota. I said earlier, here's a description of what we actually have. We've got five plants that produce distillers grains. We have five mills that produce wheat middlings. We've got one in-state plant that produces soy hulls. Uh, we have one plant that produces corn gluten feed. These are all high, moderate protein, 30, anywhere from 18 to 30 percent protein. Soy hulls are around 12 percent. Um, and these are all have uh, highly fermentable fiber. All the starch has been removed for the most part. Uh, what's left over is fermentable fiber. We do have, like I said, beet tailings and beet pulp, and we do have a wide variety of meals available, like canola meal, linseed meal, sunflower meal, corn gluten meal, and soybean meal uh, available for feeds if we need protein addition to the rations. Uh, these are all co-products. These are things that are produced by our plants. Of course, we have uh, protein sources on our uh, that we produce on farm, like soybeans or alfalfa hay or sunflowers, those are all, or filled peas and lentils are all play things that can produce protein as well as energy on farm and should be considered in a ration. Uh, screenings, just a word of screenings, be careful if you're bringing in screenings from out of state, the type of weed seeds they might have, uh, things like palm or amaranth uh, could be in those and you can definitely start a problem on your feed yard uh, if you're feeding that type of feed and allowing weeds to grow in the future. Let me just uh, make a point here about our daily nutrient costs. I received an email this morning that talked about uh, how high the protein content was in his creep feed and wanting to have uh, exceptional gains in his calves. And while protein's important, the most important part is the energy cost. We spend more in energy costs per day than we do protein costs. It takes energy, fermentable fiber, starch, even some proteins are metabolized for energy. It takes energy to put growth on an animal. So if we just look at things in general, say that I did some math here, it takes around 14 pounds of TDN, which is an, uh, a measurement of energy content, to uh, uh, put weight gain on a 700 pound steer. Uh, this would cost about a little over a dollar a day in, in energy costs. If you look at protein costs, there uh, would be well, almost a dollar a day. However, we don't, pay for all the protein. We buy the energy first and then a lot of protein comes along free. For in other words, corn is 9% protein. We buy the corn for the energy content, but we get 9% protein basically for free. So what we need to do is buy additional protein to boost up that corn so it has enough protein to maintain the gain we want. There's a lot of words to say, but really uh, when we're feeding that type of ration, we need to provide another six tenths of a pound of crude protein. And if we do the math of cost per pound of protein at 42 cents, it means we need to provide an extra 25 cents a day in protein costs. So it costs a dollar a day for the energy and another 25 cents for additional protein. And then of course that pales to the water cost and by all means that's water cost per day. Um, please, uh, Consider your water quality and water availability. That's some of the cheapest gain you can have on a, in a particular cow herd. I'd like to look at some math here when it comes to feed value. We've got four different feedstuffs, canola meal, wheat mids, corn grain, and distillers grains. Um, canola meal is known for its crude protein at 38%. Wheat mids is 17%. Corn is low at 8.5%. Distillers grains is around 26.6% or almost 30% on the dry matter basis. They all have different energy calculations. Um, distillers grains is actually high since it's got uh, uh, some fat in it, uh, more than what corn grain would. And uh, the rest of these feeds all are, you know, um, not considered as energy sources like corn is. There's different costs. So we see canola mills, $255 a ton, which hasn't changed. Wheat mids are now up to 190. Corn grain at 206 and distillers at uh, $230 a ton. So if we're looking cost per pound, um, our cheapest feed is going to be this year wheat mids. Look at cost per pound of protein, our cheapest feed obviously is canola meal. That's what we buy it for, is for its protein. 
But if you look at cost per pound of energy, our cheapest source again is wheat middlings. Although corn and distillage grains are ranked right in there side by side as being somewhat competitive um, as an energy source. That's why distillage grains is used as a high percent, a lot of our rations. Please let me talk about feed issues for fall 2021. Our biggest issue this year is how drought affected our feeds. Nitrate accumulation has occurred, may have decreased, but be sure to test your feeds for nitrates, the forages. The grains you don't need to, but the forages certainly do. The co-products probably don't need to measure those as well, but any forage that you were raised on farm should be tested for nitrates this year. And if it's over 1,500 parts per million nitrate nitrogen, it should be decreased, it should be diluted with other feeds that are lower in nitrate nitrogen. Uh, high nitrates can lead to uh, basically death. And in pregnant cows, it can lead to aborted fetuses. So nitrates are not to be uh, ignored when it comes to rations. Be sure to do a feed test to find out where yours are at and try to feed under 15, so the average of the ration delivered to the cattle is under 1,500 parts per million nitrate nitrogen. If you're using a bell ring, then your haze and that bell ring should certainly be under that 1,500 parts per million nitrate nitrogen for calves, or otherwise, I know some calves prefer to eat grain and not come over and eat, uh, prefer to eat hay and not eat grain. And of course, if the nitrate nitrogen was quite high uh, and that's all they're eating, you would end up with death loss. So the other thing a person should do is sample feeds for feed, just for, uh, for doing a feed analysis, a feed test on them. Um, with the drought, there's been uh, very a lot of variability in the type of feeds we have out there. So uh, feed testing is always important. And this year, it's a big deal. Some guys have been putting up hays or forages that have a lot of weeds in them. Try to limit that to your calves just because intake is driven by palatability. Some of these weeds aren't very palatable and calves may not eat them, of course. So uh, our corn seemed to mature for people that were actually able to get corn grain. It seemed like it was a heavy test weight. So that'll ensure that there's uh, some good energy content in our corn. Uh, for guys that put up uh, corn silage early because of the drought and the plants just did not grow, there is a higher percent water in them, so be sure to do a feed test so you know what type of moisture content is added so we can adjust the dry matter uh, consumption accordingly. Um, actually, dry matter is going to remain the same, but we'll have to increase the amount of corn size based on the higher water content. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our uh, haze are highly variable between fields when it comes to feed tests, so using book values or even just one test um, on one particular load of feed just really doesn't show what's what could be out there so there's a lot of variability out there i encourage you to feed test and know what you have especially when you're trying to do rates of gains for calves our feed costs are quite a bit higher this year i talked about that earlier it's 70 percent higher compared to the last few years um, availability appears to be okay however um, if you're in demand for quite a bit of uh, feed, you should probably figure out how to get that uh, locked up. Uh, some places might need a contract, other places might need money paid for the contract up front to guarantee supply. But this year, um, having it on hand might be the best route to make sure you actually have the feed. Feed costs and freight is always an issue when you're hauling feed around. But this year, with the feed transportation programs available within North Dakota, and the USDA, there might be some subsidy going on there or help in paying for the transportation costs for things bought outside the normal. Um, grain is high. Um, that's not a localized drought demand. That's a national demand. And of course, whenever grain prices go up, hay prices go up as well. But when you're in a drought, hay prices, because of how difficult they are to transport long distances, uh, they go up as well. So that becomes a big challenge on um, trying to find haze at a reasonable price for feeding cattle. I'd like to go through some rations now. I've got uh, 12 different rations to discuss. On this particular slide, if you look at these rations, we first start off with a grass hay supplemented with some wheat mints. We're looking at two pounds a day gain. Um, it'd take around 13 pounds of grass hay and supplement seven pounds of wheat mints, and it would cost $1.48 per day with a feed cost per pound of gain, 
at uh, 74 cents. Now, if you want to pick up our gain from 2 pounds up to 2.6 pounds, we're going to have to throw in a little alfalfa hay for the protein and energy and increase the wheat mids up to 10%. Also, we have to increase the calcium in the ration. We did that with the alfalfa hay. Well, our feed costs went up another 20 cents a day because of this ration, but our feed cost goes down 10 cents per pound of gain. Now, the same thing holds true when we start looking at using grass hay and wheat mids at a higher amount at 12 pounds. We're looking at 2.8 pounds per day gain. We have to include the limestone to offset the high phosphorus content of wheat mids. And uh, you'll see that it costs almost the same as the previous ration with two tenths of a pound better gain, which means our feed cost per pound of gain actually went down. You'll see this in the next slides too, where feed costs go down as our gain increases. Now remember, on this particular ration, we're talking $1.66 a day. Let's look at some other rations now. Here's an alfalfa corn, alfalfa hay, corn silage ration. You got the uh, king of forages in, in corn silage and the queen of forages in alfalfa hay. It'll blend to do together at that amount. Could give a, at eight pounds of alfalfa hay and 29 pounds of corn silage, would give 1.8 pounds per day average daily gain. Uh, it'd cost you a buck and a half a day, but the feed cost her at 83 cents. Now, if you add a little corn grain in there and some wheat mids, uh, take out the corn silage, put in alfalfa hay, so six pounds of grass hay, four pounds of alfalfa hay, two pounds of corn, and eight pounds of wheat mids will give you 2.6 pounds per day gain, 65 cent cost to gain $1.69. Boy, that's very similar to that other ration that was provided earlier. Now, if we go with one that looks for a little bit better average daily gain at three pounds, um, we'll find out that uh, uh, where you're feeding four pounds grass hay, four pounds alfalfa, six pounds of corn grain, and six pounds of wheat mitts. In other words, we went from two pounds of corn grain up to six pounds. Our feed costs went up accordingly to $1.80, but our feed cost per pound of gain is now the lowest at $5.96. Another ration we have here is just a dry ration of alfalfa hay and corn grain. 13 pounds of alfalfa hay with seven pounds of corn grain Gave us a 2.3 pounds per day gain, 77 cent cost to gain, $1.86 per day. Ooh, that's getting kind of expensive. Well, now let's look at a ration that we don't have much for grass hay or other feeds. We're just gonna use alfalfa hay and corn grain. And when we're feeding that amount of corn grain, we have to provide an additional protein supplement and a bagged feed works quite well for that. 3.2 pounds per day gain, which is pushing these calves along pretty good. Our cost to gain is 6.96. Uh, is 69 cents, which is uh, competitive, but our costs per day are now $2.23. Again, we're over three pounds a day gain. Now, if you want to increase that gain a little bit higher and feed less alfalfa hay and more corn grain, our at three and a half pounds per day gain, uh, we're going to end up with our uh, two and a quarter per day feed cost, which is just a couple pennies more for uh, the 3.5 average daily gain versus 3.2. And our feed costs are the lowest at, six point, at 64 cents per pound to gain. Things to remember, feed costs decrease as energy increases, excuse me, as the grain uh, increases, in the, or I should say the average daily gain of the ration, of, that provides from the ration is increased. Well, okay, now let's look at grass hay with a little bit of distillage grains to be added as protein and energy. Now this is a 1.7 average daily gain. It only gets the cheapest at a buck and a half a day, but our feed cost is at 82 cents. Now if we put a little corn into that ration at four pounds and take out some of the hay, we're going to get 2.8 pounds per day gain. A dollar 73 a day is what the cost is with a 61, 61 cent cost gain. Um, definitely workable, but not our one of our cheaper rations. If you want a little bit better gain at 3.4. Uh, we're using grass hay, corn grain, distillage grains, and limestone. 3.4 average daily gain. Find out this is one of our lowest cost feed per cost to gain. And at $1.86 per day. And that's 3.4. In the earlier slide, we're at, three, we're at above threes. And it was over two, two and a quarter a day for feed costs. So in this particular example, you can see that going from just a little bit of corn grain up to a little bit more and just changing the dynamics of the ration, really improved our uh, feed conversion or increased our average daily gain quite a bit. Uh, just a small difference of adding three more pounds of corn grain and taking out the grass hay. 
And of course, we had to include limestone to increase the calcium content of this ration because the stillage grains is high in, in phosphorus and corn grain is high in phosphorus as well. Let me just make a few comments on rate of gain goals. Um, if we're looking for a role of role, uh, sending cattle to the grass market, uh, making stockers out of these cattle, backgrounding them at less than two pounds per day gain, um, that's what we call low rate of gain. Medium rates of gain, usually two to three pounds. Um, I like to call these as you grow cattle without adding extra fat to them or putting on condition. They just have a nice growth and frame. Once you go greater than three pounds per day average day of the gain, if you do that more than 45, 60 days, you're gonna end up with uh, calves that add a little bit more flesh to them. And when that happens, you may reduce subsequent feedlot performance and cattle buyers know that, so they will uh, discount accordingly. However, if you know the genetics behind the cattle, they can do this type of gain without any loss of performance. You need to know um, what, what you're buying and know the history best way to do that is to know the historical performance of cattle and go that direction. If you're going to feed cattle, I always encourage you to target the gain with a balanced ration. As I said earlier, as you increase the protein and energy, you get better feed efficiency and better to average daily gains. So one of my examples here is to, if you want three pounds a day for 60 days, That'd be 180 pounds, or we can do it a different way. And that is we want to get a pound and a half day gain for 120 days. It really depends upon what your market weight and date is going to be and how you wish to feed cattle. Sometimes there's changes in the market that allow you to uh, run cattle at a lower average daily gain to pick up a higher price. So even though the feed costs might not be as efficient, the market gain will more than offset that and provide an opportunity for you. And if this is all home-raised feeds, uh, then again, the cost might be quite a bit lower than it would be if it was purchased out on the uh, market. Just opportunity costs would be uh, what you'd have to consider at that. I always like to have people think about uh, co-products, and I talked about where they're located in North Dakota. If you need an info sheet of uh, where they're sourced at and prices and phone calls to call, please contact your local county extension agent. They should have a list that I put together that they can uh, provide to you. That's your local county extension agent in North Dakota. Um, if you can contract fees, usually there's summer lows that you can work around. Um, anytime you have to haul it long distances, that really reduces your price competitiveness. Although this year with the transportation assistance program, that might make a little bit of difference on uh, what your cost might be. Um, usually we look at high fiber, uh, high fiber, and actually they're good in protein as well when we background cattle. Things like wheat mids and distillage grains work quite well on a backgrounding ration for adding a little extra protein. And since it's not starch baits, they uh, provide extra fiber into the ration as well, which can somewhat limit the gain that we're looking for. I always encourage you to do a great job of feeding management. That means feed bunks that don't have too much feed left in them but aren't empty as well. Provide some bedding on cold days. That'll make a nice environment for calves. We've got research of the Carrington Research Extension Center that shows that that does affect your feed efficiency and marbling in cattle, uh, depending upon how they've been, then how their environment is while they've been growing. Clean water is always a must. If you're gonna put calves on feed, uh, please try to reduce the amount of moldy feed you have because that might discourage intake. Obviously, healthy calves grow better than sick calves. Uh, try to look at ration changes slowly. Use step up ratchets as an example. Be sure to balance the ration for the weight gain for the weight and type of cattle that you have. And of course, like I said earlier, consider your rate of gain goals. Um, calves that gain three pounds uh, per day gain uh, may not show any discount at the marketplace, while other groups of calves might. So please consider the type of calf when you're looking at your rate of gain goal. Um, if you're trying to improve feed per gain with cattle, look at ionophores. That'll increase your, incre your improve, that'll improve the feed efficiency by five to seven percent. Uh, the ionophores, Rements, and Arbovitec are the trade names. Um, you can use implants to do the same thing, five to seven percent, unless you're 
an increase in average daily gain and your feed, feed efficiency will improve 7 to 12%. If you're not in a natural program, implants work well. And there are feed uh, uh, additives like Rumensin, Bovitec, Dequinate, Corid that can control coccidiosis. So uh, if you've ever had coccidiosis outbreak in a cow, in a calf crop, you certainly want to avoid that at all costs because that can certainly ruin your your growth and feed to gain when you have a coccidiosis outbreak. And coccidiosis is a stress-related disease. So coccidia are always in cattle, but when uh, there's enough stresses, they can become pathogenic. And then you end up with your bloody scour issue or nervous coxy issues. And of course, those can be real problems in a feed yard. Just like to summarize here that this year we've got higher feed prices. It happens every year though, but that's higher average daily gains usually have lower cost per pound of gain. Be sure to consider what feeds you use um, because uh, there's lots of different options out there. And as I did earlier on some of these examples, some of these feed costs are priced quite a bit lower. So sometimes a corn grain ration is not your cheapest average daily gain or cost per pound of gain. Um, it might include a co-product. Obviously, co-products are high in protein and fiber and can help uh, are a nice addition to a ration. If you start feeding too much, though, you'll have to make sure the ration is balanced for calcium phosphorus just because of the high phosphorus loads, uh, concentrations that are in co-products. And, of course, good management always leads to great calf gain.